Good morning everyone, um, so I'm back again with some videos on urogynecology this time. Um, now some of you have requested that they would like to see um, some revision material for urogynecology, um, so this is um, especially for you all. Uh, I hope this will benefit you for your MRCOG part 2 revision. So in this video today, I'm just summarizing um, this very, very important talk article that I found this very useful um, during my revision for urogynecology. So it's titled as Review Contemporary Therapy for the Overactive Bladder. Um, the key contents are overactive bladder syndrome is a common sim a symptom complex. Symptoms have a significant impact on health related quality of life. Lifestyle and behavioral retraining must be addressed initially in the treatment plan. Pharmacotherapy with anticholinergic agents is effective but has a number of adverse effects which can limit compliance. Surgery is effective in selected patients. So the prevalence of overactive bladder syndrome is between 3 and 43 percent. Overactive bladder syndrome comprises symptoms of urgency with or without incontinence, frequency and nocturia. The true overactivity is a urodynamic observation. So it's not so you can't diagnose a patient um, of having the activity just based on their symptoms. Urgency and frequency tend to be more common in men. Urge incontinence is commoner in women. Causes of urinary frequency and urgency. So general causes like diabetes mellitus, diabetes insipidus, um, diuretic therapy, congestive cardiac failure, renal impairment, pregnancy. Local causes like urethritis, bacterial cystitis, bladder calculus, bladder tumour, small capacity bladder, chronic urinary residual, um, estrogen deficiency, pelvic mass, urethral diverticulum, overactive bladder or irradiation. Painful syndrome like urethral syndromes, painful bladder syndromes, or it could be that um, there's excessive fluid intake or maladaptive learned behavior. So this is a sample of a bladder diary that we would advise patients to um, to have um, when they come in uh, with symptoms of um, overactive bladder. So as you can see on this sample uh, of the bladder diary, there is patient details down here. Um, this is time of the day. And then it talks about um, intake, so fluid intake, how, ma how many mils, um, how much fluid output, uh, what were they doing uh, at the time, if they had any leakage, uh, also if they had any urge incontinence. And this is um, what the patient is meant to do for at least a few days before they come and um, get seen in clinic. So it gives um, the physician a better idea of what sort of symptoms they are um, dealing with and when are the symptoms the most problematic for the patient. Very important uh, flowchart. Um, if there's one thing that I would really pay attention on in this talk article, it is this flowchart. So it starts off with um, saying that uh, a patient has overactive bladder symptoms like urgency, frequency, uh, plus or minus urge incontinence, nocturia, and nocturnal uh, enuresis. Um, investigations can be done um, like asking the patient to keep a bladder diary, uh, an MSU um, uh, can be sent off, plus or minus cytology. Um, now, if the patient has any pain with recurrent cystitis and positive MSU um, and cytology, then the patient can be referred for a cystoscopy and imaging like ultrasound, MRI, KUB, CT scan can be considered. Um, so, if, so after investigations, um, so if we go back to the flow chart, um, if the patient does not have any of those uh, worrying symptoms uh, is what I'm trying to get at, then you would advise the patient to do some bladder retraining um, and you go down the conservative measures like physiotherapy, uh, functional electrical stimulation, um, posterior tibial nerve stimulation. Um, or you go down the drug therapy route. So it's 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 advising the patient to take some medications like the anticholinergic um, treatments, so oxybutynin, um, tol, tolbirodine, 
um, and, and so forth, uh, solifenacin, and we'll go through these drugs in, in depth in the, in the next few slides. If a patient has nocturia, it's important to know that the drugs that are recommended are either imipramine or desmopressin. Okay, um, and then it also covers indications for urodynamics, which basically include um, so you would um, so so you not every patient is uh, referred for urodynamics. So there's certain um, uh, indicators for it, which include field uh, conservative management, um, neurological um, symptoms, uh, voiding difficulty, failed incontinence surgery, or complex symptoms. Um, and then um, you also referred to the patient for surgical interventions for refractory overactive bladder syndrome, which include intravesical therapy, um, botulinum toxin A injections, sacral neuromodulation, augmentation cystoplasty, urinary uh, diversion, plus or minus cystectomy. So um, quite an important flowchart, um, as I said, um, very, very helpful to know this. So if a patient has hematuria, microscopic or macroscopic, in the absence of bacterial cystitis and or nocturia, this is in, on its own indication for cystoscopy um, and or further investigations like ultrasound or um, CT scan or MRI and things. So hematuria um, can be, uh, it is something that needs to be investigated. So management of overactive bladder symptoms. Um, so we start off with conservatives, so behavioral tree training or bladder drill, lifestyle modifications, which include things like fluid management. So um, advising the patient to um, limit their intake between one and 1 1.5 liters, avoid fizzy drinks, caffeine and alcohol, um, drug therapy. So um, you start off with anticholinergics. They improve patient symptoms by 60 to 70 percent, so tend to be quite effective. Um, they, although um, they do have some side effects, so we'll talk about side effects. Um, so dry mouth, constipation, drowsiness, blurred vision, headaches, restlessness, nausea and vomiting, palpitations, arrhythmias, tachycardias, dry skin and hot flushes. Contraindications are myasthenia gravis, glaucoma, ulcerative colitis, um, gastrointestinal obstruction. Cautions, um, so uh, to be careful, uh, Careful use in patients who have arrhythmias, con coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, hypothyroidism, gastroesophageal reflux disease, um, renal impairment. So transdermal patches of um, the anticholinergics avoid hepatic first pass metabolism. So um, if a patient has had uh, has tried the, uh, the medical therapy for six months and they still have, are quite symptomatic, um, uh, and they have failed treatment with at least one anticholinergic or they have severe side effects from the anticholinergics or they have absolute contraindications to using anticholinergics, um, then botulinum toxin um, injections are advised. Um, however, the patient needs to be informed that they will need to do um, intermittent self-catheterization uh, post-op as they can have voiding difficulties which range from anywhere between 4 and 45%. Side effect of these injections are uh, injection site pain and hematuria, and they tend to be quite troublesome as well. Um, so the patient needs to be informed of this as well. So um, now the um, other drugs that we use for um, managing these symptoms. So the first one is tolteridine, which is basically uh, a competitive antagonist of muscarinic receptors and one, two, three, four, and five. Um, then you have your derifenacin, which is an M3 muscarinic anti acetylcholine receptor antagonist. You have your solifenacin, which is a competitive M3 muscarinic um, acetylcholine receptor antagonist. Um, Fisoteridine, which is competitive muscarinic uh, receptor antagonist as well, and then desmopressin, which is uh, enhances reabsorption of water in the kidneys by increasing cellular permeability of the collecting duct, so which is why it's effective in treating nocturia. So for, if if you get a case scenario in the exam which specifically mentions nocturia, then this is one of the on this is definitely the answer that you want to be considering, um, which is desmopressin. 
So, um, electrotherapies uh, can also be used, things like posterior tibial nerve stimulation. So, 8 to 12 sessions of this are recommended, 20, 20 to 30 minute sessions. So, as you can see in the picture, um, this is how the, the this is um, this this is delivered, um, and also sacral nerve stimulation, so stimulation of S3 and 4. Um, this is just another picture of the posterior tibial nerve stimulation. So other surgical interventions, which the article talks about very briefly, are bladder augmentation, which involves implanting segment of the ileum into the bladder to increase bladder capacity. Complications include bladder rupture, intestinal obstruction, adhesions, um, leakage from the bowel, bladder, anastomosis, abscess and fistula formation. Urinary diversion is another surgical intervention, implanting the ureters into a segment of the ileum, forming a urostomy on the surface of the skin. For total cystectomy, complications include fluid and electrolyte disturbances, uh, especially metabolic alkalosis, renal stones, renal failure, ischemia of the ileum and the ureteric structure. So, thank you so much for listening to this video. Now, if you found this useful uh, as a summary of the talk article, then please do uh, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And also feel free to share this video um, to any of your colleagues or juniors that you think will benefit uh, from learning about this. Uh, um, and thank you so much for listening.